Got another video for A-Level Chemistry Multiple Choice Practice. This is the second one for Inorganic and Physical. I hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed, please think about subscribing. As always, the link to the questions is in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so make a start. So we've got two isotopes of boron, 10 and 11. The relative atomic mass is sitting at 10.8. So obviously the 11 isotope must be um, pulling greater than the 10. So the 11 is pulling the average towards itself. So from that difference of one, there's a 0.8 pull from the 11 isotope, which is 80%. So C was the answer. Moving on to number two, so there's the two ions there. So the oxidation number for chlorine, we're told, is minus one. So there's two of them in this one. So combined is minus two. So to get a positive charge, we need a plus three from the iodine. So therefore, that means that we're left with D and C as options. So moving on to the second one. So we've got six chlorines, each one minus one. So to get that overall minus one charge, we're going to need plus five from the antimony. So C was the answer. Moving on to number three. So in an ethanol molecule, you've got six hydrogen atoms. So five plus that one there. So if you've got 0.125 moles of ethanol, you've got six times that moles of hydrogen atoms. Multiplied by Avogadro's number gives option B for your answer. Question four, so we've got the beginnings of the equation between barium hydroxide and nitric acid. We're only interested in the ratio between these two. The other way you can think about it is there are two moles of OH minus ions in one mole of barium hydroxide. So you're gonna need two moles of H plus ions, hence two moles of acid. So from the concentration times the volume for the barium hydroxide, we can work out how many moles that is. So applying the ratio, we need to double that. So that's how many moles of nitric acid we need. Concentration, moles divided by volume. Remember, volume has to be in decimeters cubed. And option D comes out as the answer. Moving on to number five. So we've got nitrogen and oxygen right next to each other in the periodic table. Their highest energy electrons are in the 2p subshell. So the arrangement for nitrogen looks like that, p3 and for oxygen it's P4. So if you remember, oxygen has this pair of electrons in the 2P orbital. They experience more repulsion, and so it's slightly easier to remove the electron, so the ionization energy for oxygen is a little bit lower than nitrogen's. So A is the reason from the list. Nitrogen atoms have less repulsion between P orbital electrons than oxygen atoms. Moving on to number six, so if X is in group two, it forms a two plus ion. If Y is in group five, it's gonna form a three minus ion. So the ionic compound is going to be X3Y2, and so that was option C. Moving on to question seven, so which is the incorrect statement about ammonium carbonate? So we'll just run through them. It reacts with barium nitrate to form a white precipitate. Yes, it would, because the carbonate ions combine with the barium ions and form a precipitate. So that is actually correct. I'll just put a tick there. It effervesces with dilute nitric acid. Yeah, carbonates do react with um, acid and form CO2. So you see effervescence, fizzing. Would it release an alkaline gas with warm sodium hydroxide? Yes, it would, because that's the test for an ammonium ion. Um, it releases um, alkaline ammonia. So it's got to be D. Well, it is D because the formula of ammonium carbonate is NH4 twice, because it's only one plus ion, CO3. So D was the answer. Question eight. So a first order reaction is where the rate change is proportional to the concentration change. So which graph shows that? A does. Question nine, how do you work out partial pressure? Well, you need another mole fraction, which you then multiply by the total pressure. So what we need to do here is work out the mole fraction of the SO3. Moles of SO3 is 0.4. We divide that by the total moles, which is four. So the mole fraction is 0.1, which we multiply by 250, which is gonna give us 25. So option B was the answer. Question 10, so we've got to calculate the pH of the buffer solution. So we're going to need to know the H plus concentration in this buffer. 
So the formula to do that is the Ka multiplied by the acid concentration divided by the salt concentration. I refer to that in all my sort of teaching videos as casid over salt, just a daft way to remember the acid on the top, the salt goes on the bottom. Now to save us a little bit of time, we don't actually have to calculate the concentrations of the acid and salt, and that's because they're both in the same volume. They're both in this 800 centimeters cube, 200 plus 600. So we can just use the moles. So we're getting the moles by just doing concentration times volume, concentration times volume, but remember the volume has to be in decimeters cubed. That comes out at 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus six, which we then need to minus log to get the pH, which came out at 5.06, so it was option C. So very well done if you managed to do that in this sort of time limit of, it's roughly 80 seconds, isn't it, for um, a section A question. Question 11, we can rule two out straight away because if you look at the sort of physical states of your reactants and your product, you're going from three moles of gas to a mole of liquid. So the entropy is decreasing, it's getting more ordered in the product side. So we can get rid of the positive one straight away. The thing is, we're still gonna have to do the calculation. So we're gonna use, I call it a SPAR equation. Entropy change is the entropy of the product minus the entropy of the reactants. And if you think about the word SPAR, you've got P before R. So you can see the answers there, minus 219.1. So option A was the right answer. Question 12, you can do in lightning fast time. If you remember that in the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, it doesn't matter what the electrolyte is, the reaction that goes on is the combustion of hydrogen. So D is the answer, but I'll just quickly explain where that comes from. So we've got this half equation here, it's got the more positive electrode potential. So that runs in the forwards direction. That means this one has to run in the reverse direction. So when you put that into an overall equation, you get this lovely looking thing here, but we can simplify this. We can cancel out the two hydroxide ions we can get rid of that H2O and knock that down to one. So there you can see half an O2 plus an H2 goes to an H2O. So D is the answer. Question 13, which are endothermic? So first one, bond enthalpy of CH bond. Well, all bond enthalpies are endothermic, so that's correct. There's the equation for the second electron affinity of oxygen, and this is endothermic as well because both of the reactants are negatively charged, so they're technically gonna repel each other. Number three, the standard of change of formation of magnesium is endothermic. No, it's not because magnesium's an element and all elements end up with change of formation is zero. So that one was wrong. So one and two are correct, so B was the answer. Question 14, sort of similar style to 13. Which statement um, explains why rates increase as temperature increases? Number one, the activation energy is less. Well, that's a load of rubbish. Temperature doesn't affect activation energy. Catalysts do, but not temperature. The collisions are more frequent between the molecules. Yeah, that's right, there's more per second. Greater proportion of molecules have energy greater than the activation energy. Yeah, because you're giving the molecules more energy by increasing the temperature. Two and three, correct, C is the answer. Question 15, so that chemical is called platin. So is one of its stereoisomers used as an anti-cancer drug? Yes, it is, it's the cis isomer. So that's what cis platin looks like. Are the bond angles 109.5? No, they're not, they're 90 degrees, so that one's wrong. It has optical isomers? No, it doesn't, just cis trans. So only one was correct, so D was the answer.